Adon. In this video, we're going to talk about how to structure a martial arts class. As you can imagine, little asterisks, right? Uh, so this is how I do it, and this is not even how I've always done it. This is something that I'm currently doing, and I really like the structure of it. Uh, so obviously, every martial art, every instructor, every class uh, is going to have a different way to generally structure it. Uh, but this is something that I like and something that, you know, I find generally works. Uh, so let's dig into that. Again, because I like to have transparency, I'm taking my ideas from, again, several different sources, uh, two major ones. So one is going to be from, obviously, my instructor, so Master Paul, um, from my both Taekwondo and my Gumdo career, uh, as well as Brian Miller, who did my, you know, HEMA training. Uh, but there's also one more person that I would like to, or at least one more, you know, source uh, that I've been using a little more lately and I really enjoy. And the third source is going to be this book. So by Sang H. Kim, Teaching Martial Arts. Really good book. I don't know if they still make it um, because I got this whenever, you know, Borders was still around. So that's been, I won't say 20 years. That might be, that may be a bit much. But uh, if they still sell it, it is a good book, especially if you are new to teaching. Uh, so... With those three things in mind, let's kind of dig into how to structure a class. Quick caveat, so this is mostly geared towards swordsmanship, but obviously can be expanded towards, again, open hand, other weapons, or just other other things, right? Uh, so if you don't know, again, just to kind of show that I'm not just some random person on YouTube saying things. Um, I am also a tutor, so I also teach, uh, you know, academics, you know, math and English and all that fun stuff. Um, I've been teaching martial arts since 08, <laughs> so that makes me feel old. But yes, so I've been teaching for a very long time, uh, relatively speaking. So these are things I've kind of figured out work uh, to certain degrees. And also, also, your teaching style might be different from mine. So for example, I am very much a one-on-one -on -one kind of person, right? So I very much like to, again, see individual personal growths um, as opposed to like a collective. Uh, so again, uh, this is the way I like to teach. So, you know, grain of salt, right? Take what you like and obviously discard what doesn't work for you. So the first thing I would like to emphasize is always work on etiquette. Now, why do I mention this first? Because you do bow in. So at least in martial arts, right, so at least in Asian martial arts, I'm going to um, kind of you know, make that a little more specific. Uh, we have a whole bowing process, uh, right, so we, you know, enter the dojang, we bow, we, you know, you know bow to you know, high ranks, all that fun stuff. Uh, now, that individual etiquette is going to be different for each individual martial art, each individual student, each individual school, not student, instructor, I meant. Uh, so that's all going to be, again, dependent on, you know, what you're doing. So for example, what we do in Gumdo, it's gonna be different from again, Taekwondo, which is very different from Hima, which is very different from Kung Fu. All of it's gonna be very, very different, but make sure you do have etiquette. So one major thing that martial arts is allegedly doing is working on your discipline, right? And etiquette's gonna be a really nice way to instill that. Uh, especially if you're working with younger folk, which I usually don't do. I, you know, as you can probably tell from my videos, I like to discuss like, you know, what's happening to the body when you cleave into their brain. Yeah, not really, not really inducive to, uh, you know, small children learning how to cut with a sword. Um, but uh, etiquette is a really nice way for you to, again, instill a little bit more discipline in the younger folk uh, and also give, you know, adults a little more structure to a potential, potentially hectic life. So always work with your etiquette. So now that we've bowed in, right, so one thing that I like to do is a stretch, right? So now I personally don't do this in my class. I usually have them stretch beforehand. Uh, but especially if you're working with a group of, you know, group of students, especially if you have a tight schedule, have a little bit of a stretch, right? So a little bit of a warm up and all that fun stuff. And as you're doing it, you can have, you can do several different things. So one thing can be simply working on, again, that etiquette, working on that, you know, complete silence, the yes sirs, no sirs, you know, yes ma'ams, all that fun stuff. Like, all right, so, you know, split, turn to your left. Yes, sir. Turn to your right. Yes, sir. You're right. I'm just gonna say that. But anyway, so so that kind of thing, that's absolutely something that you can do. Uh, you can also use this time to uh, review. This is gonna be something that I would do probably after stretches or stretches and a little bit of basics just because, again, I like to go one one at that point. Um, but always make sure you review what you did last time. 
So this gives the student a sense of progression, right? So as opposed to like every class being, you know, like, you know, a sitcom, right? Where like, all right, so you kind of reset at the end of each one or at the beginning of each one. You want a sense of progress. It's like, all right, so last time we worked on, you know, your front kick. So like, if you remember, we did like this front kick, round kick combination. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna review that for like five minutes and we're gonna move on to your next thing. I really want you to work on, since last week we did, you know, lower body, let's do some upper body, let's do some, you know, knife hand strike, let's do some back fists. As an example, that wasn't, that wasn't supposed to be like a, you know, a general thing. Um, but again, so review, right? So again, again, give that student a sense of like, oh yeah, that's what we worked on. Uh, and then it's like, all right, so now that we did that, let's do this, right? So giving a brief explanation about why you're transitioning, right? So for example, like, all right, last week we worked on lower body a little bit more. Um, this time we're gonna be working on upper body. So again, giving, giving these reasons. So again, first of all, it gives the student a reason to first of all, remember. Also, a reason to trust you, right? So, so long as you actually do teach the thing, don't be like, oh, we're gonna do knife hand strikes and back fists and then work on cartwheels. Like, make sure you're not lying to your students, right? So lying is generally not, you know, good. Um, but yeah, so make sure you do review, right, at some point. Um, again, spe specifically in the beginning and then kind of give them, not quite the agenda, but like a general theme that you'd like to work on. Have a general theme. That's, that's also a nice thing to think about, right? Uh, so, for example, something that I'm taking again from Master Paul is like, so, all right, so this week we're working on balance. Okay, so then we're going to have a bunch of drills working on balance. All right, this week we're working on, again, cardio. Let's really work on, again, sparring for like 20 minutes straight. So that kind of thing. So if you have a theme uh, they can do for like an entire week or a month, probably not a year, a year's a bit too long, um, but like if you have a specific segment and the students know it, they kind of know what to expect, right? Um, so then they can kind of like prep themselves mentally even before going. It's like, all right, so we're working on balance. So like, all right, so let me kind of like think about that even, even while we're stretching, right? So by having a theme, that does help. So a quick recap, because I talked too quickly, <laughs> right? Uh, so we had a nice quick etiquette, we bowed in, uh, we do a little bit of, you know, warm up, maybe again, run around. So if you do have younger clientele, a little bit more active in the beginning, kind of like get their initial energy, you know, burst, right? So you can kind of like settle down a little bit. Uh, we did a little bit of stretching, right? Maybe some basics, right? So for example, uh, if you're Taekwondo or karate or something like that, you know, some basic front kicks, um, some, you know, jab punches. If you're doing gumdo, you know, we have a whole set of basics, right? So we do chumming peggy, chao peggy, sangna peggy, all that stuff. So go through the basics, but with intent. So this is something that very, very easily goes over the head of especially, especially assistant instructors or new instructors is, all right, let's go through the basics. Ready, center cuts. One, two, three, four. Like, like, all right, like, cool. Versus like, all right, so we're gonna do center cuts. What I want you to think about is really pull your left hand over your head, not on top of it, over your head so it's in line with your nose. Uh, so that gives, again, a very specific image for your students to be working on as they go through basics, as opposed to something like, one, two, three, four, five, like, otherwise they're just counting, right? Uh, so give them, you know, something to focus on. Now this could also be like, all right, like, again, try, try and do a little bit of open hand and sword, uh, like, all right, let's focus on really curling, you know, the ball of the foot for that front kick, really feel like the stretch in your calf as you pop out and curl it back in, right? Chamber, kick, back, down, and it's like, all right, so I'm not just doing front kick, one, two, three, it's one, two, three, four, one, one, two, three, four, two. So again, giving them intentionality um, is, is something good to work on. Um, and if you're working with high ranks, if, you're, again, if you tell them straightforward, like again, like up front, like, all right, we're gonna go through basics. I want each of you to think about something specific that you want to work on. Um, and be able, so again, this is kind of me talking to the students, and be able to tell me what you just, what you were focusing on, right? So, especially if they're high ranks, especially if they're older, it's like, all right, I leave it up to you to kind of know what you need to work on, and I'm gonna ask you after basics what you did. Like, oh, I was working on, you know, engaging like the, the waist, right, when I'm doing my cuts. Like, oh, well, I was working on making sure everything was centered, Right, so like I feel my, you know, my, my uh, spine a little bit straighter. So 
That is also a really nice thing for you to do as an instructor, is especially if you're working with, again, people who know how to, know, know what they need to work on, give them that time, right? So this also kind of builds that trust, like, all right, like, I trust you enough that you know what to focus on. So that's another thing you can work on. So at this point, we've gone through basics, right? So again, all the way up through the beginning of class, let's actually start talking about drills, right? So obviously near the end, we're gonna do again, a little bit of a cool down, you know, bow out. So it's gonna kind of mirror what we did in the beginning. So I'm gonna kind of like deal with that now. It's like, all right, so, right. So you just finished your class. Okay, let's do a little bit of stretching. Let's cool down a little bit. Let's bow out again with etiquette and then leave, right? Um, but let's talk about those drills, like kind of sandwiched in between, again, the, the, um, the bow in and bow out. So what I really like uh, that Dr. Kim does, I, I did this because that's where the book is, is he mentions three specific areas to think about as you, again, develop drills. Now, he has these specific three, but you can change them for whatever martial art that, or whatever concepts really work with your martial art. Uh, he works with speed, strength, and endurance. Uh, now, I change it a little bit for a sword, right? So speed is going to be working on reaction. Uh, endurance is endurance, right? So being able to fight for long periods of time. And strength is a little bit different, but being able to, again, have a little bit more oomph in your cuts. For example, bamboo cutting is a really nice way to do that. But uh, have at least one drill uh, per class that does each one of those three things or whatever you want to do. So for example, if you're doing a softer style, Something like, all right, let's work on stances. Again, nice deep stances. Uh, let's work on fluidity. And let's work on energy flow or something along those lines. Uh, I don't do as much soft style as I would like. Like, all right, so I'm doing this drill for, um, again, the stances. Again, it could be something as simple as like a line drill where you just do stances down line. Obviously, the more imaginative, the more it will kind of ingrain into the student. Um, and you can, again, think about individual drills for each of those three major concepts. And so each class, they're getting better at their, in this case, uh, their speed, their strength, and their endurance, usually three things that we want from a good martial art class. And what I like to do with that is in between uh, each of those uh, three major groups, I'm gonna have curriculum, right? So for example, I might do speed drill. Okay, now let's work on curriculum, right? So for example, let's see your form, let's see you go through your one step, let's see you do X, Y, or Z, something that you're already familiar with, maybe even something almost like you can use as a cool down, right? So maybe if you did do endurance, they're like, <sighs> like, all right, let's work on like meditation or something like that. Or let's work on, you know, your form, but mostly working on, uh, you know, stances or working on like your breathing as you go through your forms. Um, again, always giving intentionality whenever you're saying like, oh, go through this thing. So I like to have, again, curriculum uh, in between probably the first two, right? So again, if we do like speed, curriculum, endurance. Next, I like to do is application. So again, this is what my school, um, I say my school, that's what I like to really do. Um, but again, application doesn't necessarily always have to be, all right, uh, you give me a center cut, this is how I parry, this is how I dispatch you. It could be, again, if you're doing softer style, like, all right, like, let's work on, again, really being able to push with nice, 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 you know, fluidity and power, right? Or like, oh, let's work on, again, meditation, really working on, again, uh, certain energy centers and stuff like that. So, so long as you work on application, uh, again, really show the students how to, again, apply their martial art, uh, how they, both they and how you want to do it. Uh, and then uh, cap that bottom off with um, the third one. So for example, I think I did speed and endurance, so now strength, right? And what I like to do at the very end is sparring. Uh, so this is where I'm kind of taking stuff from uh, Master Miller, uh, from HEMA. So I like to have application, I like to fight, I like to actually use that kind of stuff. So the way I like to view it is use the curriculum portion to, work, to figure out what you want to work on and then apply that in your fighting. So for me, uh, for me, Gumdo is mostly about, again, learning how to fight, so let's actually fight. So I like to have sparring for the last like 10 plus minutes uh, with judges and stuff like that. Uh, and then after that, we bow out and we're gonna be happy from there. So review, just because this is also how you can also teach. Um, so right, so have a nice introduction, right? So work on your etiquette, 
uh, do a nice little warm up again, working on again stretching, uh, getting you know some of the initial energy or you know or um, you know pent up energy burnt out a little bit. Uh, do some stretching, right? Do your basics, right? So again, working on uh, something with intentionality, whether it's like just front kicks, whether it's center cuts, whether it's cartwheels. I don't know what else people would be doing. Um, work on your basics with intentionality. Uh, do one of the three drills. Again, work on one of the three major concepts. Curriculum, another one of the three. Application, another one of the three. And then I like to do sparring at the end. And then we can close up with either stretching, uh, meditation, or really anything that you would like to do, kind of as a cool down, and then bow out. And that is a pretty, pretty packed class. Um, now, obviously, if you feel like you're running out of time, or if your classes are shorter than um, what I cram into mine, uh, you can obviously be like, all right, let's work on you know speed today, endurance tomorrow, and speed, speed, endurance, whatever the third one was, uh, on the next one, right? Speed, endurance, strength. Yeah, here we go. So if you want to, you can split those up uh, throughout the week, or if you just want to have that single theme, right? So we're talking about, you know, balance, for example, uh, you can also do that instead. And as I mentioned in the beginning, every instructor is going to teach somewhat differently. Uh, every, even every group of students is going to receive information differently as well. Uh, so for example, if you're teaching a bunch of children, they're going to react differently than as opposed to like a you know group of adults. So really know how to gauge your clientele, right? So don't be like, oh, let's you know run around in circles to a bunch of you know like thirty plus year olds just being like, all right, I just came off work. I don't want to just run around in circles. I want to fight. Um, so always like again tailor whatever your drills are going to be to again the student in the class. Uh, but yeah, so this is how I structure my classes. Uh, I'm, I would like to go into more detail of some of the more specifics of it in, maybe in the future, but this is at least a way for, you know, if you're new to instructing, uh, there are a couple of sources, right? So again, Teaching Martial Arts by Sang H. Kim is a really, really good book if you're new. Um, even if you've been teaching for a while, it gives you a new perspective. Um, and just kind of see, again, attend different classes from other instructors, see how they structure it, and see if, again, what they do works for you. Uh, so I guess with that, so make sure you, you know, keep training, stay humble, stay safe, and, you know, just feel different ways of teaching. I don't...